Hello, everybody. We're back. Hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend. Oh, we've been busy working. Well, Monday. I don't know. It's supposed to be the hottest day in New Mexico. We're approaching 100 degrees, so we've got the iced tea. We get the iced tea boiling. <laughs> That's what it is. You can't keep enough ice in this to keep it cold. <laughs> yes. Now, before we get into the main part of the video, I just wanted to do a quick tidbit that uh, somebody sent me, and I apologize, I don't have the name written down, um, but someone sent me this and asked me this question. Excellent question. So what I'm going to do is I have Watchtower's Bible. They're, uh, well, it's from but, Stephen Byington, but, you know, the copyright belongs to Watchtower. Yeah, the Bible in Live in English, published by the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, translated by Stephen Byington. And I want to go to Luke 21, now, 8. Now, wait a minute. Is this the same Stephen Byington? Is this the same Bible that in the forward it says using the name Jehovah was a blunder? Yeah. Okay. But yet then Watchtower later in the back says that Byington endorsed the name Jehovah. Even though Byington said it was a blunder, Watchtower then comes back and says Byington endorsed it. Yeah. You're talking about that same Stephen Byington. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're clear that we're talking about the same Byington that says the name Jehovah was originally a blunder. It's that same Byington. Yeah. Okay. You're right. digressing. I just want to make sure. Well, no, there is a point to this. Yes. But anyway, I wanted to read it right from the Bible that Watchtower published. Luke chapter 21, verse 8. The sign when this is to take place. And he said, Look out that you be not misled. For many will come under my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Because in the New World Translation, they have the appointed time is here. Do not go after them or do not follow them. So, you know, it, they've changed it. But the reason I want is the, the phrase, the time is at hand. Do not go after them. Wait a minute. I seem to recall somewhere in Watchtower's history that they wrote books. What was the name of that book? Jeez, that just, it just escapes me. What was the, the time? I think the name of the book was The Time Is At Hand. Do not go after them. Don't make me hit you with this. <laughs> Nine, my, uh, this particular one is 1906, but there's a few earlier ones. C.T. Russell wrote a book, The Time Is At Hand. Isn't it funny that the same very words that entitle their book is the same very words that we should be saying, Wait a tick, do not follow them. <laughs> Okay, now let's give them the benefit of the doubt because we know they've thrown Russell under the bus yeah. and it's been new light. So possibly they may not have said anything like that after Russell, oh, right? Certainly not, certainly not. In all their benevolent wisdom. <laughs> 1944, the kingdom is the at hand. The kingdom is at hand. Yeah, do not follow them. What part of the English language do not follow? follow them doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah exactly okay now to get into the meat of uh that was a little uh salad to <laughs> spiritism spiritism <laughs> this is an update to our greber video and oh my goodness we had so many emails and comments and messages oh thank you so much everybody for all your information and stuff you've been sending and uh, so I tried to gather it together. And Atlantis, thank you so much for giving yes, us thank you, my friend. more information. And yeah. uh, I wanted to mention... Go ahead. I, you know what? Now that you do this, a, thought, a scripture comes to mind. Now i got to go find it. Yes. Okay. So while you look at that, um, if you go to avoidjw.org, and type in spiritism, Watchtower involved in spiritism. Ricky Gonzalez has written a wonderful article about this uh, Watchtower's involvement with Johannes Grieber. 
and how you know they were promoting and he has quotes you know that were very favorable to that and uh, I went to the Watchtower Library before I had found this article and I typed in uh, Grieber and a whole bunch of stuff came up and uh, I just wanted to share one and this is from the 1956 Watchtower Bond volume page 110 and same thing is they're kind of making it's not negative let's say it that way says Johannes Grieber in the introduction of his translation of the New Testament copyrighted 1937 I myself was a Catholic priest and until I was 48 years old had never as much as believed in the possibility of communication with the world of God's spirits the day came, however, when I involuntarily took my first step towards such communication and experienced things that shook me to the depths of my soul. My experiences are related in a book that has appeared in both German and English and bears the title Communication with the Spirit World, Its Laws and Its Purpose. End of quote. This quote is taken right from the book that Mike has been reading, yeah. Communication with the Spirit World of God by Johannes Grieber. So Washar is quoting right from this book. Okay, I go on. They say page 15 to paragraphs 2 and 3. In keeping with his Roman Catholic extraction, Grieber's translation is bound with a gold leaf cross on a stiff front cover. In the foreword of his aforementioned book, ex-priest Grieber says, The most significant spiritualistic book is the Bible. Under this impression, Grieber endeavors to make his New Testament translation read very spiritualistic. And then when you go down into about the middle of paragraph 11 of this Watchtower article, uh, it says, Grieber's translation of these verses reads, and then they go in to the verses at uh, 1 John 4, 1 through 3, where it says to test the spirits, which he did. Yeah, keep keep them going because I still ain't found that scripture that I'm looking for. Oh, I for. have more. How <laughs> good. So at the end of paragraph 11, uh, after they quote his uh, translation of those verses, and uh, very plainly, the spirits in which ex-priest Grieber believes helped him in his translation. So Watchtower, I think, is sounding very favorable towards Grieber yeah. and his, you know, translation of this. Okay, so, nice little booklet here, Unseen Spirits. This is the 1978, published by Watchtower and Bible Tract Society. Unseen spirits, do they help us or do they harm us? And we are going to go to page 47. I find Watchtower's hypocrisy in talking about themselves hilarious. Oh, I do too. Under the subheading at the bottom of page 47, associating with servants of the true God. Paragraph 90. The Bible urges us to meet together with others, to be built up in love and faith. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. With whom can you do that? Members of the churches of Christendom, though, professing belief in the Bible, often are right in among those seeking the services of spirit mediums and medicine men in different parts of the earth. However, Jehovah's Witnesses take a different course. They keep fully clean from anything that could lead to control by unseen spirits in opposition to the teachings of God's Word. Okay. Before you get to this point, I want to read the scripture because the scripture fits. Okay, so the scripture I'm looking for is at Revelation 18. Start at verse 1. You know, the angel is showing John about Babylon the Great, and he cries out with a strong voice saying, she has fallen, Babylon the Great has fallen. The world empire, the world empire, false religion has fallen, and she has become the dwelling place of demons and a lurking place of every unclean exaltation. In Watchtower's theology and how they have taught us all to destroy Christendom, Babylon the Great, the world empire's false religion, all you have to do is go to the reasoning book 
and look up how they destroy the faith of other religions. And they will tell you that if it's teaching is not in line with the Bible, then it's part of Babylon the Great. She's become the lurking place of demons. How do you know whether the demons are lurking or not? If these unclean spirits are there. Well, most of you know that Kim and I early on did a lot of... Um, um, Subliminal, image Subliminal images, thank you. <laughs> Subliminal image videos re as they relate to Watchtower. One of the things that was really stood that really stood out to me was most of the time you would watch Watchtower's rendition of Christ dying on the stake, there's a baphomet on his chest. And when they do that, Watchtower leaves out the crown of thorns in Jesus' head. Now we all know that the Bible plainly says that Christ died with a crown of thorn on his head, but yet every time Watchtower pictures Christ dying at the stake, the Baphomet's on his chest, but the crown of thorns is, mi is missing. So in the artwork you can see these demons, these unclean spirits lurking. But yet, at the same time, when Watchtower does what Kim is about to present, there's even more of a connection with the occult and with the spirit world. Done? Done. Okay. So, want to thank Atlanta so much for sending us this information because Johannes Grieber was not the only one. There's two more that we're going to cover today. So, as Kim reads this, ask your question. If this religion, the Washington Bible Tract Society, is truly God's channel to mankind and or the organization that God is using to restore truth, then why do you have to quote sources of people that are plainly and absolutely identified with the occult? Okay. So... Watched her Bond Volume 2000. This is the April 1st. April Fools. April Fools, another one. Yeah. And the April Fools is on the rank and file. You know, that Watchtower has connections with spiritism. Now, like I just read in this, Unseen Spirits, they're totally clean from anything to do with the spiritism. But yet, as part of Babylon the Great those demons and those unclean spirits would be thrown into the world empire false religion. You should be able to see that they're also here in Watchtower. Yeah. Now what's interesting about this particular Watchtower, is there anything wrong with witchcraft? And they have a picture on the front. April's Fool. Yeah. April's Fool. Here we go again. The first article. What do you know about witchcraft? Okay. <laughs> This would be the second to the last paragraph. It is in the upper left-hand corner. Last couple of sentences. Okay, well actually I'm just going to start at the first paragraph. Throughout history, witches have been hated, persecuted, tortured, even slain. Little wonder that modern practitioners of witchcraft are eager to improve their image. In one survey, dozens of witches were asked what message they most wanted to express to the public. Their answer, summarized by researcher. Go ahead. Researcher. Remember that word, researcher. Yeah. Margot. Sorry. Margaret. Margaret. Mar yeah. Margaret. Yeah. Margaret. Adler was, we are not evil. Okay, she's saying we. Now remember. And quoting witches. And remember, we this is a researcher. They're, they're, they're putting this Margaret Adler in the category of researcher. And quoting from her. Just like they did with um, the other historian, Daniel... Um, P. Mannix. Daniel P. Mannix. They said he was a historian. We have showed that to be he was not a historian. He was a writer of fiction. Yeah. So now we have a researcher into the occult. She quotes from her. We are not evil. 
We do not worship the devil. We don't harm or seduce people. We are not dangerous. We are ordinary people like you. We have families, jobs, hopes, and dreams. We are not a cult. We are not weird, dot, dot, dot. You don't have to be afraid of us, dot, dot, dot. We are much similar to you than you think. Okay, so this is a quote from Margot Adler. Who Watchtower labels as a researcher. Yeah. So what I did is you can go to Google and you can put a phrase in, in quotation marks, and it will take you to all the websites or quotes where that comes from. So I recommend you do that. If you're interested in researching this fuller, put her name, Marga, M-A-R-G-O-T, Adler, A-D-L-E-R, and then do the quote. Um, any phrase in that quote will work. Now, I came up with controversialdark.com slash Margot Adler, and they have a picture of her, and it says, Margot Susanna Adler was a Wiccan high priestess. Wait a minute. Writer. High priestess? So that means she's more than just a researcher. Yeah. Wow, the sure. demons are lurking. Journalist, lecturer, and author of the now classic book, Dra Drawing Down the Moon. Worshippers and other pagans in America today. Okay, and uh, then it has the quote. Uh, she had this to say about witches, wiggins, and pagans. And this is the quote that Watchtower quotes from. We are not evil. We don't harm or seduce people. We are not dangerous. We are ordinary people like you. We have families, jobs, hopes, and dreams. We are not a cult. This religion is not a joke. Now, it's interesting that Watchtower leaves that particular that phrase out. out in their dot, dot, dot. We are not what you think we are from looking at TV. They leave that one out, too. We are real. We laugh. We cry. We are serious. We have a sense of humor. You don't have to be afraid of us. We don't want to convert you. Oh, they left that out, too, didn't they? And please don't try to convert us. Just give us the same right we give you to live in peace. We are much more similar than you think. Margot Adler. Interesting. Interesting. So they're quoting directly from what they would deem a spiritistic source because she is a Wiccan and she's a high priestess. She's not the researchers that Watchtower leads you to believe they're quoting from. She is actually a Wiccan high priestess. They are consulting the spirit world, Jehovah's Witnesses. You've been misled into believing that she's just a researcher when in fact she is a high priestess, the same very people that you should not be sourcing your quotations from. Exactly. Okay, so moving on, we have another one that Watchtower is um, quoting from. Okay, let me just go back and add one thing to my final statement. Okay. April's full. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't have the hard copy of the 1985 Kingdom Interlinear, but I've got a PDF of it. Now, in the, back in the appendix, uh, under one, uh, 2A, which is on page 1139. Now, if anybody wants the PDF of this, um, I will put the link to it down below. Okay, like I said, Appendix 2A, Jesus, a godlike one, divine, John 1.1, 1, 1, and the word was a god, godlike, divine. They have the Greek word kurios. Okay, then they have a list of ones that they use for their translations. Now, when you go down to the third one, 1864, and a god was the word. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong one. I can't see. Okay, it's the second one. 1829. And the Logos was a God. And it's from the Montessorian or the Gospel History according to the four evangelic, evangelical <laughs> evangelists by John S. Thompson, Baltimore. And who is John S. Thompson? Okay. 
Ay, 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 ay. Is this, is this one still confirming uh, Revelation 18 that every unclean expression would be dwelling in Babylon the Great? You yeah. know, the world empire of false religion? Yes. Now, I've got all of this information on a PDF, and I will put this down below, and I will also put it on our website. Just give me a day or two to get that done. But the American Quarterly Review of September 1830 has John C. Thompson in it. John S. Thompson, excuse me. I shall rejoice in having been the happy instrument in the hand of God, of having done fourfold as much for mankind as all the professed commentators of the last 15 centuries. Aside from lack of humility, it seems Thompson was moved about by every wind of doctrine as well, moving from being a Calvinist to an Armenian Methodist preacher, Arminian, to being a restorer restorationalist, then on to an Aryan restorational, restorationalist, I'll tell you, these words from the 1800s I know, kill me. Yeah, I know. Until finally being a Unitarian universal, Universalist, the Cretans also record that Thompson admits to having experiences with, yep, you guessed it, spirits. All right. So well, it says spirit beings who instructed him to be careful to yeah. do what? Yes, because I'm going to read the quote. It says, the spirit beings who instruct him to be careful to represent Jesus as only the instrument of God in all he does. And like I said, this is from the uh, quarterly, the American Quarterly, and all of this, uh, the PDFs of the books. There is also a book called The Fanatical Guides. And when you click on that, yep, that's where it comes from. And so they talk who's, about his... Uh, so who's arrogant. instructing him? Who's instructing him to be careful on how he represented Jesus as only the instruction of God? Well, I'm about that, to that, read that. The instrument. Who's, who is his instructing? Because, see, this has to do with John 1.1, 1, 1, and the word was a God. Yes. So I'm going to, this is on, from an article on pages 237 and 238 on this book. And it says, uh, I will now proceed to relate things just as I've done before, agreeably to the views and impressions I then had, leaving everyone to form his own opinion. I acknowledge my mind was in a state of great excitement at the time I had these extra extraordinary impressions, but it did not then seem to me, nor does it yet, that the degree of the excitement was adequate to the phenomena. I awoke one night and heard a considerable noise in my room. I listened carefully for some time, and the sound was that of a thousand pens, writing in great haste, which was dictated. Okay, now this is where we come in with, like Mike said, lurking place of demons. I heard a voice very distinctly saying, In all your writings, be careful to represent Jesus as only the instrument of God in all he does. End of quote. I immediately interrupted by exclaiming, Quote, silence, I not believe one of you, end of quote. The noise immediately stopped, and I was often afterwards sorry that I had interrupted the dictation. I examined, but there was no person in the room, the door being locked, and none had yet arisen in the house. So now let me, let me see if I understand this. This person is speaking with a spirit. And obviously he's an evil spirit because he says, be careful how you represent Jesus because he's only an instrument of God. Do we happen to find a phrase similar to that in any Watchtower language, uh, literature? Because keep in mind, Watchtower is God's channel to mankind and yet Watchtower says that, oh, we believe in Jesus Christ. We follow Jesus Christ. Never would we demean Jesus Christ in such an ugly manner. <laughs> Need you even ask. <laughs> and then I want to read a scripture from 2 Thessalonians. The 1921 Harp of God. 
And I want to thank Andrew who sent me this uh, quote. And uh, it fits in nicely with what we're talking about. Page 187, uh, paragraph 313. The word Christ signifies anointed. Anointing, anointing means designation to official position in God's arrangement. The Christ is the instrument or channel for the blessing of mankind. The Christ is composed of Jesus. I thought Jesus was Christ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Christ is composed of Jesus, the great and mighty head, and 144,000 members. The Christ is composed of Jesus and the 144,000 members? So I guess the Christ, Whoa. the Christ well, anointed, means body, anointed. The, whole body, the whole body, yeah. Yeah, well, here's, here's the question, Jehovah's Witnesses. Who is Rutherford in contact with that he's using similar language to the same spirit that's telling oh, this? Oh, oh, I know who. Do you know who? Yeah, he's talking to the same spirit that John S. Thompson was. Oh, okay. Because they write the same thing. They they both demean Christ's position as a, just a, a mere instrument. Why is it that Jehovah's Witnesses put more value on their governing body than they do Jesus Christ? Answer that question, Jehovah's Witnesses. But see, I have the answer for that. Well, I was going to say, does isn't the governing body just an instrument? They're just, they're just an instrument. So why are you... People playing with this instrument that calls itself the governing body. Washtown Babel Craft Society. Why are you playing with just the instrument? Instrument? Harp of God? Hmm. In, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2. We'll start with verse 3. But before I read the scripture, I want to preempt this with thought. We all know that Jehovah's Witnesses, a.k.a. the governing body, a.k.a. those that are sitting at the right hand of Christ when Judgment Day comes. You all love throwing out this word that the apostates, the apostates are after us. Watch out for the apostates. You love this word apostates. But yet you really do not teach what apostasy truly is. You want to throw it upon those that leave the organization because you say that we are leaving God. The turning away from God. Second, Second Thessalonians 2. Let no one seduce you in any manner, because it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction. He, sets, uh, he is set in opposition and lifts himself up over everyone who is called God or an object of reverence so that he sits down in the temple of the God publicly showing himself to be what? <laughs> to be a God. <laughs> an instrument. <laughs> an instrument. Yeah. The apostates are an instrument of Satan. Here's the thing. Jehovah's Witnesses, stop and realize Think for yourself, when Watchtower turns to the spirit world to be educated in the light, new light, they have apostatized themselves from God. They're the apostates. They're the apostates because, I mean, you, you all read the account where Saul turns to the witch of Endor, and right there, when you, when you read that account, in the scripture, you say, see, Saul became an apostate because he went and consulted a spirit medium. But yet, your beloved governing body, or more pointedly, your beloved Judge Rutherford, turns to a spirit medium, quotes from the spirit medium. How was that any different? It's absolutely not. You have turned from the word of God and have consulted with the spirit mediums. And you even quote them. In your own work, just like that, that uh, priestess, that witch priest, priestess. You see, you're supposed to be staying away from this because when Kim read in that little brochure, Unseen Spirits, you say unequivocally, we absolutely will not do this. 
And then you turn right around and you read your literature and there it is. Our mascot Maya just ate our elder's letter. <laughs> That's the noise yeah. you heard. And <laughs> so you Jehovah's Witnesses, you really need to stop and think and read and ponder on what you're being told. They, they won't do it. <laughs> By John S. Thompson. So they quote him. They use his translation. The Logos was a, a God. God. The word A is being inserted by spiritist people that are in communication with the spirit world. Like Johannes Grieber. They validate his version of John 1.1 1, 1 that steals from the deity of Christ. And now they also quote from this guy in 1829 that in the Logos was a God. Again, a man that's in connection with the spirit world that says be careful how you how you um, represent Jesus as only an instrument. Thus, at John 1.1, 1, 1, you have these men that are in contact with the spirit world stealing from the deity of Christ. And Watchtower comes out of John 1.1 1, 1 in their piece of crap translation, the New World Trash translation, and says Jesus was, a, or the Logos was a God stealing from the deity of Christ. And yet, Revelation 18, chapter 18, says that the world of false religion, Babylon the Great, would become the dwelling place of demons and every unclean expression. Yes, that is what I was trying to spit out. But when you go to the PDF of this book, The Fanatical Guides, page 238, this is what the spirit, this demon, is telling him to be careful in your writings, you know, make sure that Jesus is only an instrument and totally taken away from the deity of Christ. So it's interesting how these spirits, and I'm thinking, if this really was an angel from God, then they would not be, you know, trying to downplay Jesus' role in all of this, or well, his deity, or his power. Don't the scriptures teach us that at some point every knee in heaven and earth would bow to the name of Jesus Christ, and yet you've got these men speaking with the same, you know, angels that are supposed to be bowing to the knee of Christ, just demoting him to... An instrument? A God, an instrument. Be careful how... Wow! You can really see how these unclean expressions or demons are dwelling in Babylon the Great, which now puts Watchtower in the same lap as Babylon the Great. Well, Whew. let's just go back to this quote. However, Jehovah's Witnesses take a different course. No, they don't. They keep fully clean from anything that could lead to control by unseen spirits in opposition to the teaching of God's Word. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they do not. I know. I'm agreeing we, with you. We just confirmed. Satan Watchtower is consulting spirit mediums. Otherwise, they would not be validating the spirit mediums that are detracting from the deity of Christ. And it's plainly seen at John 1.1. 1, 1. Yep. Wow. And in continuing with our update on Grieber, Mike has come up with an interesting thing in the book that he is reading. Well, uh, it's just... Written by Grieber. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I'm only up to page... Well, actually, I'm up to page uh, 75, but I skipped over to page 110 because I just... Holy Spirit, don't ever deny it. I know. I, I, I make a joke, but I, I happened to drop my bookmark... And the book, I had nothing to do with I that. I know. And the book opened up to this one particular page as we're looking at all of this. And here in big, bold letters, the phrase, Holy to Jehovah, well, appears. We want to mention that the hardback book that Mike has is the 1979 Nine, 6th six, edition. So this has been revised six times. Apparently, the spirit that was delegating... Biblical truth or truth to Johannes Grieber had Grieber, new light too. Had new light. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, so well, what Mike asked me is like he said, the Holy to Jehovah. He says, 
is there do we have the original yeah I happen to have the original scan on PDF of this book but before we get to this I just want to say that being where I am at today and in light of the fact that Johannes Grieber was a Catholic priest he should have readily been able to see that he was being led by a false spirit appearing and or speaking truth. I want to be careful how I word that because... And isn't it interesting that Grieber, Watchtower quoted him, that's what I was reading, to yeah. test out every, you know, spirit or expired... E inspired expression. Inspired expression. Are these evil spirits capable of speaking truth while a Jehovah Witness would readily say oh no oh no the evil spirits are they are incapable of speaking truth go back to your scriptures when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by who allegedly Satan. Satan. Lucifer or Satan the devil Satan is just a title but by Lucifer, because some people will say that this particular angel that Jesus was speaking with was Lucifer. Did he speak truth? Yeah. Yes, he did. He said, if you bow down and give me one act of worship, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Was that a false statement? No, that was the truth. Because Satan or the resistor, Lucifer, Beelzebub, was in control of all the governments of the world and he could hand him. So that was a truthful statement. When he said, just turn these stones into loaves of bread, was he speaking the truth? Yes, because he knew the Son of God could do that very thing. And then also, the resistor said, throw yourself off the cliff. For it is written, the angels will not let your harm come to you, or however that's worded. Did he speak the truth? Yes, he did, because the resistor would know that Jesus would have the ability to defy gravity, just like he did when he walked on water, according to Scripture. Now, when Johannes Grieber is speaking to this spirit, there are things in here that, from Johannes Grieber's perspective, would be revealing truth. Today, since we are so much more enlightened, we see it as not the revelation of truth, but what we see is um, our better understanding of the sciences. For instance, in here he's talking to Johann Grieber about OD. Ode, ode, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. But when you read the absolute storyline that Johann Grieber is writing as the spirit is speaking, the spirit is showing how human DNA works and how at birth this cell becomes part of the liver and all these millions of cells that are destined to be the liver and or the heart will all congeal and become a solid state. Now from Johannes Grieber he would say, oh my God, this is the, this is God himself speaking. I mean I can just imagine, I can see how he got tricked into believing that he was speaking with a spirit from God himself. Because he's speaking about things that Johann Grieber and or the science at that time in man's history would not have any clue that he was actually speaking about the DNA. So when if you choose to read this, it from my perspective, the spirit is speaking in something that's absolutely foreign to Johann Grieber, but to us, it's everyday common knowledge. There is no secret. There is no magic in what this spirit is saying. So in the mind of Johannes Grieber, this spirit could absolutely pass himself off as something other than a true spirit of God. So it really gets funny when you start reading this. Now he gets into this page here on page 110. 
in this spirit is referring to Johannes Grieber that even in the days of the um, Aaronic priesthood, the Aaron priesthood, that these men had the same ability to communicate with spirits. Now, according to the, to the Bible, these the spirits that Aaron was speaking with were the true angels of God. The biggest difference from what I can see early on is that the spirits of God did not need to use a medium to communicate to the um, Levitical priests. Whereas when you read this book, every time the spirit is speaking to Johannes Grieber, he has to throw some young child, some boy, into convulsions to be able to take over the body before the spirit can speak. And to me that makes sense because at that point in time, those spirits, those evil spirits, the, the, the ability to take, away, to take on flesh was taken away from them. So they have to use children and or weak-minded people to convey this nonsense that they're doing. But I want to read this on page 110 because the last time we did this, the Spirit ended up using the name Jehovah. And I was kind of hoping at that time that somebody would have had the original writings to see that the original writings of Johannes Grieber, he did not use the name Jehovah. He used something else. But I want to go back to this and show where why they had to update this. And I'm questioning why. Okay? So this, this spirit begins by reading. Now I'm quoting from the spirit. In your modern version of the Bible. Okay, now remember... In your modern version, in the original language, the original writing was 1932. Yeah, 1932. In your modern version of the Bible. Now, in 1932... <laughs> King James was pretty much it. King James was pretty much it. In your, So, go back to 1932 in the modern version. Of the Bible, this breastplate is referred to as the breastplate of judgment because it was used by the Israelites when they desired that God's judgment be revealed to them. It was in the shape of a square and consisted of four rows of precious stones, the first row being composed of a sardius, a topaz, and a carb, uh, carb, carb, Carbuncle. Carbuncle thing. I want to say carbnun carbnuncle, but carbuncle. The second of an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And a third, a... Uh, yeah, I don't know that name of that stone. J-A-C-I-N-T-H. An agate of amethyst. And the fourth of beryl and onyx in jasper. Now he's quoting from Exodus 39, 8. And then he goes on. Each stone was engraved a character standing for one of the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. A kind of alphabet being thus formed. The reason why precious stones were used was because they possess Odic power to a high degree and thus strengthened the high priest's hand. Between the stones was a wide smooth groove of gold having no shape, no sharp corners or edges. edges. A part of the equipment was the plate of pure gold worn upon the miter and engraved with the words, Holy to Jehovah. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I want to go back up to the start of the first paragraph. The, the previous paragraph. In your modern version, which would have been the King James Version in 1932. Now, I don't have a King James Version of 1932. 
But that one looks about that but old. This one looks <laughs> about that old. It is worn and tattered. There just happens to be no copyright date on this particular Bible. But as you can see, it's very, very old. Exodus 39. Now remember, holy to Jehovah. Exodus 39. Let's see, 30. I'll just read verse 30. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engravings of a uh, signia. Holiness to the Lord. Doesn't say holy to Jehovah, to Jehovah. Holiness to the Lord. I have the revised standard King James Version. Revised standard version. Yeah, revised, yeah, revised, but this is the, re the revision of King James, right? 1952. Yeah. 1952. Exodus 39, 30. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it in an in inscription like the engraving of a signia. Holy to the Lord. Now in 1932, when he wrote this, the Spirit is saying, Holy to Jehovah. But yet, all of the Bibles of that modern day say, Lord, Lord, Lord. Now remember, this hardback book we have is 1979. And it's been revised six times. Now keep in mind, in 1932, the Spirit is saying, in your modern Bible. 1932. In the modern Bible of 1932, the name Jehovah did not appear. How do we know that? Because we happen to have the PDF of the 1932 Johannes Grieber book, Communication with the Spirit World of God. We know the change. So why don't you reread that paragraph? Above it, again, in your modern translation of the Bible, this breastplate, dot, 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 goes right down to that paragraph. A part well, that's even changed. Yeah. It's referred to as the oracle plate. Yeah. <laughs> it goes on. A part of the equipment was so called forehead plate, a holy a holy diadem of gold engraved with the words dedicated to the Lord. What? No Jehovah? No Jehovah appears in the original writing. So this book that's connected with the occult apparently has had six new lights appear in it. Just like the Watchtown Bible Craft Society, every time you have a change, there's new light. Wait a minute. Can't these spirits of God that they're in communication with get it right? First it says, dedicated to the Lord. And then by the time you get to the sixth edition, dedicated to the holiness of Jehovah. So My we, goodness! So we have a correction to make to our first Grieber video well, but, where we said... Um, how can this spirit say the name Jehovah? Because you can't. it wasn't in the original 1932 version of Grieber's book. Yeah, we haven't read all the comments, so somebody may have already caught that and made that correction. But so if you did, good catch. Good catch. Because I'm trying to let everybody see with the way we did this is that in the original writings of Johannes Grieber, he didn't say the name Jehovah. This came to be a later edition. Probably like. once, probably once the Watchtower and Babel Crap Society started printing their Bibles with this false name Jehovah. So by the time you get up to the sixth edition, in 1979. Maybe this is why Watchtower wanted so many copies, so that they could encourage the family to change this scripture. Who knows? Who knows? But I do know that when you get to this particular book, 
Yahweh in the Bible by, this is only the second edition, Marvin T. Wilson. Page 83. Uh, second paragraph. The hybrid translated word Jehovah has been used by many to, divine, to define the four letters of uh, the four letters used in the Tetragrammaton. It may be briefly noted that the form Jehovah has no warrant at all in Hebrew literature, being a hybrid form of the consonants of Y A H V E H in the vowels of Adonai which was used to replace the name of God, held too sacred to pronounce, even before the Christian era. And he is quoting from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, V-A-H, oh, excuse me, Y-A-H, V-A-H, page 585. Okay? As re uh, regarding Jehovah, Hans at Spohr, um, I'm not, it's op.cit.page30, right. The earliest appearances of this transliteration we find in two pages of the Pugio Fidel. And we know that was Martin, Martinez, Martini, Martini, page 1278. Though it is not improbable that this is due to a later copyist. We know for certain, however, that this misnomer was brought into prominence by Petrus Galatianus, G-A-L-A-T-I-N-U-S, confessor of Leo X. We know that this name Jehovah has no, has no Jewish... Um, so where I'm looking for the word here connection uh, connection um, well it's a hybrid name the Jews avoid using it well remember when we talked to that um, I think he was an Orthodox an Orthodox Jew, Jew if I remember right but anyway we talked to someone of the Jewish faith and they said you do not use that name Jews do not use that name you don't even want to know what it means. And they would not they tell would us not what tell it us. meant. You they, do said, they said it was so a disgusting name for the Almighty that they will not even tell you what it means. So when you go to Strong's Concordance and you look up the name Jehovah, the Strong's Concordance mistakenly leads people to say this is the, the name of the Jewish God. No, it's not. You're being misled. They refuse to use that name because they know that there's a spiritistic connection with it. And when Johannes Grieber comes out by the sixth edition, here's that name with a spiritistic connection to the occult. There it is. Anything you want to add? No, I think that's it. So I know there's a lot of research to look up. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go and put this all on our website. Just click on blog and scroll down to Watchtower's Connection to Spiritism. And I'm going to put all of the information on there. So thank you so much for watching and listening. And um, see you next time around. You guys all have a wonderful weekend. We love you all. Bye. Bye. Mine if it hadn't been to those meddling kids. Hadn't been to those meddling kids. If it wasn't for you, Snoopers. Hadn't been to those meddling kids. You've heard it time and time again. But who said it first? I did. I did. Who dares defy me? They are the villains. You don't learn this till you've been in the biz a while. See, the key is the hidden door. Whoa! Ordinary people on the wrong side of justice. Oh, yes, I was groomed to be an astronaut. And then the monkey. The monkey took my rightful place! And how do they feel about Scooby and his gang? In the word? Anger. I cannot speak without my lawyer. They could have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling... Well, There's a monster staring everybody Spooky footprints, kind of strange and muddy
in a terrified town that doesn't know what to do When it seems there's no